Hello, welcome to Life Talk for May 9th, 2017. I'm Mark Crutcher. And I'm Renee Hobbs. Thanks for joining us today. Um, you well, had a subject you wanted I would, to bring up. I would like, yeah, I would like to get started on um, on a phone call that we got the other day. And we get many phone calls, either people thinking that we're an abortion clinic or um, people thinking that, um, that we're here to help them, to give them advice if they're post-aborted. And I, and so we got a phone call the other day, and this lady, um, her daughter found out she was pregnant. She went and took a pregnancy test, and it was confirmed that she was pregnant. And the default position that the medical community took was for her to uh, to go ahead and terminate the, the pregnancy, even though she was trying to get pregnant in this situation. I know not all situations are like that, and, yeah. and I know... I know from experience, my son's friend um, also had this happen to her. She found out she was pregnant, and they wanted to give her RU486. That was the first, th and they pushed it, and they pushed it, and it's just, it's ridiculous. It's sad, and she was not going to go for it. She wanted to have nothing to do with it. Yeah, it is a, it is a problem that we've seen where, for some reason in the medical community now, it's, there's, this, there's this almost assumption that if a woman is pregnant, she doesn't want to be. Right. Th that's the first assumption. Right. And I had a friend years ago who uh, was dating a nurse. He, he was a physician, and he was dating a nurse here. And she was talking about when she got pregnant, she was trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. She was married, wanted another kid. But when she got pregnant, she said, everybody just assumed I'm going to have an abortion. That's just, that's just the way the language was. Right. What happened to the medical community that caused this to happen, I mean, right. that took over. Well, and not to mention, this lady that called, her daughter is a diabetic, right. too, so she has health issues. But diabetes is not an indicator for killing your baby. No, absolutely There's absolutely lots of diabetic not. women that have, have babies and have no problems from that. And you can get gestational diabetes in the middle of a pregnancy, so. Right, right, and, but anyway, the question is, what happened in the medical community that caused this situation? Um, First off, let's understand something, that if you're an OBGYN or a GP and you've got a woman that's pregnant, and you think that there's anything that might cause this to be a complicated pregnancy or a pregnancy that's going to require more than just a normal care that goes into a pregnancy, um, you might see abortion as the, as the easier alternative. Oh, sure. Less liabilities, for sure. Less liability, and I want to talk about that in a minute because that's, that's the big issue here. Right. But... You know, if if you think, you know, and, and human beings have this tendency to take the path of least resistance, and if you think, mm -hmm. I'm going to be dealing with this woman for the next seven or eight months, ever how far along she is, and this pregnancy is going to be complicated, it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of time, it's going to take a lot of effort, it's going to cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. it's all these things, wouldn't it be better just to go in and have her kill the baby, maybe get pregnant again, and maybe that pregnancy won't be so complicated. It'll work out the next go round. Right. Right. Um, so we see that kind of attitude a lot in the medical community. Um, but what Renee just mentioned is, is a bigger issue, um, or at least as big an issue. I had a case several years ago. This was long before you came, but I've, I've told you about it several times. I had a case, um, a woman called me from Virginia, and she had been trying to get pregnant for 12 years. And it had some miscarriages and had some, a lot of problems and couldn't get pregnant. And finally, she did. Um, and the doctor that was treating her knew that she had been trying to get pregnant. He, he, he was one helping her try to get pregnant. And she said, I was just astonished when I went to, went to him that right after he diagnosed me as pregnant, I'm all excited, he walks in the room and starts trying to push me to get an abortion, despite the fact that he knew I'd been trying to get pregnant for 12 years, had counsel with me and my husband both about it. And she said, I was just astonished, but I wasn't even remotely interested in having an abortion. Um, but she said he kept insisting on this and calling. He, she said he started calling her at home and okay. telling her, you need to, you know, need to schedule a termination because you're gonna, you, you could have problems. It sounded like he was desperate for some reason. He was very desperate for her to have an abortion. Um, then he actually started calling her husband at work at his job, she, he was calling her husband saying, look, um, your baby has got a condition that's incompatible with life, and the baby's not going to survive anyway, but if you let her go forward with this pregnancy, you may lose your wife and your baby, um, and scared this guy to death, and he started trying to hammer on this woman to have an abortion. 
eventually she caved into the pressure and did have an abortion. Um, a pathology report was done that showed a perfectly normal, healthy baby. There was nothing wrong with her baby. That's sad. It was extremely sad, and this woman, um, well, as it turned out, she eventually wound up in a, a psychiatric ward in Virginia. Um, but she, her life was destroyed over this, and she and her husband had split up. She blamed mm -hmm. him because he had sided with the doctor on mm -hmm. this abortion deal. Sure, yeah. And she said, why would this guy have done this? Well, we put her in touch with an attorney that was in our network at that time, and he got all the medical records. And one of the things that came up here was that three weeks prior to this woman going and get her, going to the doctor and them finding out she was pregnant, she had been to that same doctor for flu-like symptoms. They didn't check her to see if she's pregnant. I guess they just assumed she'd been trying to get pregnant for 12 years. It's not going to happen, so she's not pregnant. Um, but for whatever reason, they didn't check her. And um, they gave her a drug to treat this flu that in the physician's desk reference said should never be given to women who are pregnant because it can cause birth defects. And what we pieced together, or what this attorney pieced together, and he had seen these cases before, is that at the, at the doctor's office, when they diagnosed her pregnancy, the doctor or the nurse or someone there looked at the chart and mm -hmm. said, uh-oh, she was here three weeks ago. That means she was pregnant then. Mm -hmm. And we gave her this drug. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen if this woman gives right. birth to a baby that's got problems? And therefore something's wrong with the baby. Right. Yeah. Or could be. Or could be, yeah. And so they started pushing her to have an abortion. And, in, and so in effect what they were doing was they were protecting the doctor's medical malpractice history. Um, if he if he gives if he did not if his office did not do the right thing before they gave this drug, mm -hmm. which in the PDR says do not give to pregnant women, mm -hmm. and she winds up with a baby with problems, he knows he could be on the hook for this, or he mm -hmm. suspects that he could be on the hook. And so he was pushing for the abortion to lower his medical malpractice issues. And unfortunately, over the years now, we've totally been involved in about 2,000 cases involving. Uh, what we call abmal, abortion malpractice. It used to be a big part of our of our uh, efforts here at Life Dynamics, um, but we saw this consistently. And what we found was that abortion was being used by some members of the medical community who would tell you. Some of them even tell you they're pro-life, very much opposed to abortion, and I'd never do abortions, but they will use it mm -hmm. to protect themselves against medical malpractice. Mm -hmm. It's it's an abhorrent situation, but. It's what we've seen, and we've seen this time and again. And it's interesting, Renee, I think I've gone over this with you before. One of the things that really tipped us off to this early on, and this attorney that we were dealing with, uh, Ted, I tipped him off to it was, he said very often when these OBGYNs or these GPs would start pressuring a woman to have an abortion, and or, the way you figured out what they were trying to do was when they either, when they said that they wouldn't do the abortion, but they would send her somewhere else to have the abortion. If the abortion was being done for medical reasons, mm -hmm. they could do it. Mm -hmm. There's not an OBGYN or mm -hmm. a GP out there that doesn't know how to do an abortion. Right, but they don't want to be responsible. But they don't want, they're right. looking for someone else to bring into the loop. Right, to point fingers to. So if there's a subsequent medical malpractice claim, they can mm -hmm. say, well, I didn't do it. It was Planned Parenthood or it was this abortion clinic right. or whoever. Right. And so one of the red flags that we always looked for in these medical malpractice cases when a woman told us that her doctor was pressuring her to have an abortion, which she then had, it went, the first thing we'd always ask them is, did he do the abortion or did he insist you go somewhere else and do it? And when we heard these women, and almost all of them did say, no, he wouldn't do it, but he sent me to Planned Parenthood or he sent me to this other abortion mm -hmm. clinic, um, that was an indicator. That was, that was an absolute proof in our mind that he was doing it to protect himself and he was looking for someone else to point the finger at mm -hmm. if there was ever a medical malpractice case. Right. Thanks, bud. People do need to hear stuff like this. We yeah. appreciate that comment. Right. Um, you got a good comment on the... I did, yeah. I, I can glance at it every once in a while without... And seeing yeah, you know, what yeah. people are saying. Without being distracting. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... You know, you hate to think that people can be this cold-blooded and especially people that you trust with your life if you're if you know talking about somebody in the medical community well and as a physician too you trust your physicians right i mean you sometimes you shouldn't you, but you're supposed to you're supposed, you're supposed to be able to. to right but what you have to understand is that like we've talked about here many many times in the past abortion 
destroys everything it touches, not just the baby. Mm -hmm. It's destroying our society right now. Mm -hmm. It has already destroyed our political process. It has destroyed the medical community. Mm -hmm. It abortion. destroys the mother's futures it when they the, have an abortion. Right. It destroys the woman's psyche. It destroys the woman's uh, maternal instincts. It's, yeah. I think it's had a, a dramatic effect on the maternal instincts of the American females. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is, it destroys everything it touches. Yeah. And this is a classic example of right. it. But um, anyway... Um, that's all we have for this time, I yes. think. Yeah, if, we, if you have any questions, comments, or any suggestions, if you'll just, you, you can private message us or send us a message um, here on Facebook Live. I can see everything that's going on. And then also, um, if you'd like to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, go to Life Talk or Life Dynamics, and then uh, Life Talk TV. You're able to to subscribe right there. Absolutely. And um, yeah, one thing she brought up is really important. If you have a subject you'd like to see discussed here, uh -huh. not just a comment or a question or something on something we've already done or whatever. If you have a subject you'd like to see us discussed or you've often wondered about, uh -huh. as far as the pro-life movement is concerned. Uh, send it to Renee, and and uh, we'll ser seriously consider it. Uh, yeah. Consider it because uh, everybody out there has some experience with right. abortion. Yeah. Uh, like this lady that called the other day, and she mm -hmm. had a question: Why are they pushing abortion on my daughter? Yeah. And she doesn't want an abortion. She's happy to be pregnant. She was trying to get pregnant. Right. Uh, why are they pushing abortion on her so hard? Yeah. Right. And so you might have questions like that too that we could help with. And believe me, when you work in this thing every day like we do. You see aspects of it that the average person who's not in it every day doesn't see. And maybe we can help um, point out some of those things. So if you have a suggestion for a subject that you'd like to see us covered, um, be sure and... Yeah, and let us know. Be sure and let Renee yeah. know. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this time. And um, until we see you again, remember, Life Dynamics is not here to put up a good fight. We're here to win because winning is how this killing is going to stop.